Well, what's going on, everyone? It's Nick Reflex, codename Love One, and I have my beautiful partner Laurie on the line, and we're going to have a little chat about timeline shifts, as we've just experienced a timeline shift. So, um, I wasn't really aware of timeline shifts uh, previous to meeting the beautiful Lorelei um, two years ago, and. I am well aware now, uh, I'm pretty aware of, of uh, when a timeline shift occurs, but um, I'm going to ask Laurie a few questions, she knows a lot more about this than I do. Um, so we've just had one today, right Laurie? We, yeah, we did, and there, I generally, there are some earmarks that I look for in a timeline shift. Yeah, so there's, so, so, I mean, okay, so I can usually tell when there's a timeline shift, for instance, so we have different ways of, I mean, you have ways of telling that something's going on, there's a timeline shift, so first of all, um, okay, well, I'm a, we might as well start there, so I'll just quickly explain what I think happens when we've shifted timelines, and then we'll go a bit deeper into it, so for me, um, my sleeping pattern changes, so I could be, um, say, up until 6 a.m., um, sometimes 9 a.m. I cannot sleep, you know, that's one, um, just one little indicator that, that some kind of, something's, something weird's going on, you know, a timeline shift. Um, so, what about you? What, what would you say? Um, I perceive them really pretty palpably. It's very noticeable to me, so I'll feel this very odd, kind of dizzy nausea out of nowhere. There's no, I'm not ill, there's no reason for me to feel it. So when I feel that, I begin looking for some visual signs. Um, I've had my vehicle change perceptibly. So you, um, you've told me this. It so, will, it will, it will be so you said you've come out of a store, timeline, right? A, you've come out of a store, yep. and then it's like, you, yeah. did you say you, you, your vehicle's <laughs> changed parking spaces, or it changed shape, or or the, the, something it, different? It did, all of that. It was really horrible. I came out of the store with my daughters, um, going to where I knew I had parked, and my car wasn't there. And I, you know, I was panicking and I, you know, almost felt like I needed to report it stolen. And I looked around and across on the other side of the parking lot was a vehicle, the same color as mine. And I recognized it as mine only because I always have a crystal heart, a clear crystal heart hanging on my rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. Everything else was different. My vehicle was dirty inside. It had changed from um, more round to a boxy shape. It was just, it was the same type of vehicle, but it 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 was it was different. It was so, very very different, and and that was just awful. So things so it things wasn't in the are, same parking space at all. So things are different on timeline shifts, right? Yeah. So yeah, I can so you you said yeah. you've told me one thing before. You said um, so people can be like even you can be in a relationship with someone, right? Or or a friend and they see you a certain way, right? And then a timeline shift can occur and then suddenly they see you in a completely different light. Is that something you told me? It is. And that was that's really that's really kind of, it's very sad too, because I was very close to this one person. We've been friends for years and just friends. And all of a sudden he just didn't remember the years of friendship, just didn't remember at all. And um, so it, was, it really was like losing a friend. Uh -huh. He just didn't remember anything. Didn't remember. 
So. So those are two ways. That was several years ago, yeah. So those are two ways, right? So let me ask you the simple question that everyone wants to know: What is a timeline shift? Can you explain? Well, the best way I would describe it is a manipulation of the reality you're experiencing, going from one reality to another, and you know sometimes. It can be very, very bad, and I, I generally attribute the the not good or the really painful shifts to um, parasite manipulation. It's like everything is not right. So Nothing is right. Par- parasite. Nothing feels right. Parasite manipulation. Yeah. Do you want to explain that? Well, I mean, we have unseen controllers. Um, they like to manipulate things. They like to change things. People have been talking about Mandela effects for years. Those are there. I, I mean, that's one way to name this phenomenon. But those are timeline shifts. Right. So and the, so when he, okay. when the parasites are the ones doing the timeline shifts, to me, it's to erase important history. So people would have heard of the, Ma- the Mandela effect, right? So people would have know, heard about the Mandela pe- effect in the uh, conspiracy truth movement, right? So, for instance, uh, what was it? Bernstein bears, Bernstein bears, you know, they were spelt differently, right? right? So that's just one example, right. yeah? So there's lots of them. Um, Man- Mandela died in jail, Mandela didn't die in jail, right? Hence the Mandela right. effect, right? Yeah? Yes. Okay, so yes. that's a timeline shift. So we remember one thing, and I'm, I, I'm certain this happened, and then we're in a, in a reality or a, a, a present moment, now moment, where that isn't the case, that didn't happen. Or, or people are saying that didn't happen like that. I mean, you're like, I was there, it happened, right? right? So that's a timeline right. shift, yeah? Yes. Okay, so... So going back to your explanation, so you're saying it's parasite manipulation, mostly, or sometimes? Mostly. Mostly. I think, I think mostly. I think that the tide is shifting is um, more of the awake and aware are becoming um, more in tune with their inherent capabilities. This is a magical realm. It just is. Um, you can shift your own timeline and, and one way that kind of the mainstream has um, supported what I'm saying is shifting your mindset from lack to gratitude. Yeah. You really can shift your own timeline in that way. Only they don't, they don't talk about it like that. But that's what it is. You're manifesting a better, stronger, more prosperous timeline for yourself just by shifting your mindset. That is how powerful we are, truly. So we're powerful creator beings and we are um, the masters of our destiny and we are the creator of our reality. And therefore we are able to um, control which timeline we are on. Is that what you're saying? uh, The last bit? It is. Is what I'm saying now there's a caveat here there are parasites who don't well, these parasites do not want us to know that we are in fact very powerful creator beings so they do try to trip us up so this is the parasite That's manipulation where, yeah yes right this is their call them whatever the fallen ones the The archons uh demons archons i just call them parasites they're they're hyperdimensional beings yeah and they're able to manipulate the matrix and uh, the mr smith effect you know the mr smith is is basically you know jumping into bodies um so these archons are able to take over uh, human suits and, and the soulless human and suits, anyone really. Dogs. This is the evil eye. They are the evil eye. Okay. And so uh, timeline shifts. Um, 
what else can we ask about timeline shifts? So, so you mentioned, shifts, you mentioned I, positive I and negative. So people are aware. Yeah. If you end up on a timeline that just feels inherently bad, the, the best thing you can do immediately is to declare aloud that any timeline you are on is always wholly, purely beneficial to you and all those you love and care for. And that, and maybe in that way, um, that's a form of gratitude. You can shift yourself into a better reality just by that alone. We, we are not powerless against the negative timeline shifts. And always call your energy back to you, cleansed, purified, and healed. Send all energy not your own back to its origin, also cleansed, purified, and healed. And um, in doing so, you can also say that, that um, because this energy was affecting you and you're returning it, you're returning it in such a way that it can't ever be used to affect you negatively again. You have that right. You have that right to control where your energy goes and how it flows. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and so you mentioned positive and negative timelines. So do you believe or, or do you know that there's so do you think there's positive and negative timelines oh yeah right and so how can you so a negative timeline would be a parasite manipulation in general yes now you can shift your your own timeline yourself onto a negative timeline and that's that's just a lot of negative thinking you could do that a yourself lot of right negative affirmations i never get anything right i never have any money i'm always fucking this or that up so you, could you be, can shift your own reality you could be in a, a low vibrational state you could be drinking alcohol or you know, one hundred percent. Yeah. These, these, you lose know, the alcohol. On drugs. Lose the alcohol. Lose, yeah. You, you know, you could be on these things, and you would shift yourself into a negative timeline, right? Is that? Yes. This is very. It's very true. Okay. And a positive uh, timeline. Now, also. How do you shift yourself into a positive timeline? Gratitude. Gratitude. Um, by by. Um, feeling gratitude for the good things in your life, for declaring aloud, and even writing down, write it down, speak it aloud. This, this, this realm is um, a magical realm, yeah. Based on spell casting, so cast your own spells. You have that right, and you have that capability. Write it down, speak it aloud. Any timeline I am on is always beneficial to me and those who I love. I am always protected. Okay. These are um, ways to use the, this magical realm to your advantage and to your protection. And do you think that there are multiple t timelines playing out at once? Yes and no. Yes and no. Um, so we, we're multi-dimensional. Multi-dimensional beings. Sorry? We're multi-dimensional beings in, existing in multi-dimensions simultaneously, right? So we're spiritual beings both in a physical manifestation. We also exist in spiritual realms on the astral plane. Yes. We have various different yes. bodies, astral bodies. So we, li we, we exist in different dimensions, right? So... Is there different timelines playing out was the question. What do you think on that? Well, yes, but not in an organic sense. These are the um, extra timelines are um, like AI controlled. Okay. And when they're, it, uh, this is my feeling. When they're stable enough, they can shift you. When those timelines are stable enough to their specifications, and I don't know what those spe specifications are, they can shift you. But they have to. They have to. Um, there, there has to be something that they can take from you, whether it's 
you're having a bad day and then a, a negative alternate timeline can be created and you can be shifted onto that. So we really have to be aware of our thoughts, aware of our words, and use them to our advantage. So you could be, for instance, dream hacked, right? That could be a parasite manipulation. You, they can they can hack into your astral um, uh, travels. Yeah, you're you're traveling yes. while, while you're asleep, and that that would be called a dream hack. And so you could wake up yes. and have you'd have had nightmares, and then you you be on a lower vibration, you're in anxiety, you're in a, yes. and you've been yes. shifted to a, a, a negative timeline. Would that be the case? Um, that would be my experience, yeah. Right, so we've both the experienced hacks. those things, right? Yeah. Mm. And you know, I really think that people, I think everybody is experiencing these timeline shifts. They just don't know what to call it. Well, this is why I was saying. They just uh, don't realize what's happening like, like this has happened all my life and up until oh like the last eight nine years i didn't know what words to put to it yeah i didn't know how to describe it i mean i first heard of the mandela effect in i think 2014 2015 and obviously i've been experiencing timeline shifts probably forever right but not oh, knowing yeah. not knowing what they are or what to call them and as you know, as you came up with the, you know, you, you use that phrase timeline shifts. I'm like, oh yeah, of course, that's like, I actually know what's happening now. And when it actually happens, I'm like, that's a timeline shift. And the thing is, well, we, we, you... ch we check in, right? I say uh, timeline shift and then I'll check in and you'll probably say timeline shift, you know, an hour or even later that day. So we're both aware and, and confirming that that is the case, right? Isn't that right? Well, that is right. And I like to check in because I've lost valuable relationships due to a negative timeline shift. So I definitely like to check in. And, you know, it, it's kind of like one day, it's like the most beautiful day. Everything has gone right. The sun has been out. You've solar gazed. You've had your bare feet in beach sand. And literally overnight, everything changes. That could be an earmark of a timeline shift. You know, one day is beautiful and the next day is so starkly different. That's that's a timeline shift and it's a negative one because you've had such a beautiful day because you're on such a high vibration it's time to trip you up it's really horrible and now we're learning how to shift back how to negate the negative timeline shift that's a really important um, evolution in consciousness for those of us who are awake and who are able to recognize what's happening, how to take that control back. So I wanna really ask you about the nature of the timeline itself and to get, to get that explained. So we're not on a linear, time is not linear, right? It's, it's cyclical. No. It's cyclical, it, we go in cycles, right? So we, you know. Well, it's happening all around us. Yeah. It's happening all around us. That's how you can actually go back and heal something in the past. I mean, there is, I mean, I just watched, I just watched a Gurdjieff. healing work in the now. I just watched a Gurdjieff uh, podcast thing and he was saying, there is only now, right? The future, the future is now, the past is now. So um, what you become, in the future is you know it's now so what you are now is be, is what you're going to become in the future you know he was saying well, we, this is what we know right there is only now i mean listen to eckhart toll the power of now okay there is only this now moment right yes okay so i'm not a big fan what, of his so. i'm not a fan of him either but and, we but know that that is, that's the that, truth that that is true and that can be very very empowering so what's this timeline shift? Now, you can heal. So what's this timeline? If there is only a now, what's a timeline? And if it's not a linear, then what is it? Is cyclical? What what it's these these shifts, these jumps, are they what are they? Is what I'm trying to get at. Are they 
shifts to um, parallel dimensions playing out, or I I think my own personal feeling is that we're being shifted to um, when it's when it's negative, we're being shifted to a simulated reality. Mm-hmm. And if you look at it from that perspective, and you think back, or you know, think upon when you have felt a negative timeline shift, nothing feels right. Even your own skin doesn't feel right. Or at least to me, mm-hmm. that's my experience. It's- nothing feels right. That that to me is an inorganic reality, a non-organic reality. And that's the best way that I can explain it. That we're being shifted to something simulated. And if you accept that that simulated reality is your permanent now, then you've basically consented to the simulated reality. And that would be an AI... If mani- that makes any sense. AI mani- and that would be an AI construct. And that would be an AI manipulation The when you jump into a negative simulated timeline, right? Right, yes. See, I don't... I, I have never believed that learning through trauma is um, ever the way of an ensouled being. And this thing- I also know that this realm is not, uh, it's not a school. You don't come here and get stuck here over and over again in order to learn how to be a better soul. Your soul was created in complete perfection in the first place. What you learn is how to navigate through hell realm. So the soul is perfect. One of the, go. The soul is perfect. The soul is pure. We come in as pure perfection that is our true nature infinite source self and this um, is a common misconception in earthly um, philosophical truth circles that this is a school or some kind of university where the soul evolves right and you're saying that's absolutely not the case that is absolutely not the case. That's new age horseshit. New age. And what that does is it it's um, manufactured consent for you to remain stuck here over and over again. When we're multidimensional beings, we have no business being stuck in hell realm, learning how to crack rocks together to create fire. When, in fact, we have the ability to create fire just with our consciousness alone. Do you see what I mean? So, when we accept the notion that this is a school and we have something valuable to learn here at the soul level, we're consenting to remain here over and over and over again. And what that does is it keeps the most powerful beings, the most powerful manifestors, the most powerful creators here under at least partial control of the parasites. And this is what's known as a soul trap. And there are uh, there is something yes. called there is something called lost souls. And these lost souls follow Yahweh and Jesus mm. and believe that mm. religion is going to save them. And so these beliefs If they're in soul at all. These belief systems they carry on into the um, the next realm with this with them okay and this is how souls get trapped and so these are called soul traps when you follow the false light right you're following a false doctrine you're believing in, in an external savior you're waiting for someone to come back and save you or, or whatnot and these when you get I'm, I'm guessing when you pass over or when you move to the spirit realm, these are not truths and therefore you're carrying false beliefs and this is how soul traps occur and then you need to reincarnate, right? And learn to remember the truth, right? And, and, right. and remove all these traps and, and you call them 
reptilian overlay programs, right? Isn't that something? I, yep. That's what I. That's what they are. They're reptilian overlay programs. Anything having to do with dogma that has been passed down, any from any source, any book, any any book that has been man-made, um, channeled, anything like that. That's that's dogma, and that's part of a soul track. You're following um, multiple blueprints for control to keep your consciousness your manifesting capabilities, your creator capabilities here so that these archons, these parasites who cannot create anything on their own, they can use your capabilities to create for them. That's all prophecy is. Well, a, a, a lot of prophecy. Does that make sense? A lot of well, obviously, the three Abrahamic religions are the most obvious soul traps and uh, false doctrines, but you're saying there's other things like you've got the new cage, new age bullshit, yes. you've new got cage. the Pleiadian yes. Galactic Federation of Light, all of these things um, are false light, right? Yes. And if you believe wholeheartedly like so many idiots and retarded morons um, that this is the, the truth, then what's going to happen is you're going to pass over and these false beliefs are going to stay with you. And this is where your soul... You'll bounce back here. Soul trap you comes in. You won't have any place to go. You'll have you to come back. You cannot take those... Um, yeah. You won't advance. Soul-crushing, soul-crushing, soul-entrapping beliefs mm -hmm. and move into a higher existence. You can't. So one of the things you mentioned was channeling. Now, we hear about so many things channeled. I heard about the law of one the other day and we looked into that and it was a being called Ra yeah channeling right. channeling right. the law of one now you say it's been around for a while I've only recently it's heard of this for a long time. yeah so and then we've got Bashar Daryl whatever his name is and then you've got other idiots um, channeling 4D entities malicious malevolent entities passing themselves off as 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 the light the nine the nine the is, nine yeah, we, otherwise known as legion legion so they're demonic um 4d malevolent entities passing themselves off as light right is that passing themselves off as as benevolent as justice oriented mm -hmm. um when in fact if you look really closely they're neither they're controlling um malicious and vicious you have to just look closely yeah look at the words the words the spells are really important to look at so another channeler a great channeler was the Beast 666 Alistair Crowley who channeled a whole um, book called Thelema from a entity called Lamb right have you heard of this I have and I really haven't I have had no desire to place my consciousness there at all it just felt so dark that I just it wasn't for me to I didn't even want it to enter my own consciousness so any information I have about Aleister Crowley is surface information and it's kind of like a no-fly zone for me I just don't go there yeah I don't I don't want to even bring it in to my consciousness not even to negate it so we, we see in 2022 people who will remain nameless who I've named on, on my channel um, with followings of, you know, a couple of hundred thousand subscribers channeling these, these Pleiadians and the Nine and the Galactic Federation of Light. And, and what you're saying is, for you personally, you stay away from these channelers, right? Um, every so often I'll listen, but I don't 
invest any energy in it in their stuff at all. Yeah, me, me um, neither. The, one of the things that the parasites can and do do is implant um, thoughts, ideas, visions, feelings. It's really good to question if you're if you're having a really bad day and you're having really dark thoughts. Stop for a minute and think. Why would I think such a thing? That is not me. And then watch it dissolve. We, because it's not you. Well, we know so that, no. channeling does that. It implants false information. Well, that's and right. You, of course, feel that the channelers feel important and valued because these beings are are giving me all this information, and they don't really stop and um, ask themselves why. Why were they chosen? Um, one channeler was um, she had what a psychiatric parent, someone who was in this in psychiatry who hypnotized her as a child. I mean, there are so many ways um, that MK Ultra can set someone up to be used by demiurge consciousness. That's what I call all of the channelings. That's demiurge consciousness. That's not of higher consciousness, that's demiurge consciousness. And also um, the use of um, things like LSD as a teenager uh, can in induce and um, incite mm, trauma, trauma and fragmentation of the soul, which lets in these uh, entity attachments, right? And, um, I have a friend who's schizophrenic who did a ton of LSD when he was a teenager, and um, he might not ever be right again. He might never be right again. Hmm. I the LSD that kind of stuff I don't do, won't do. Well, I just won't. yeah. So I mean, what we're basically saying is. Be careful who you're contacting, right? So, uh, you know, there's a lot of this new cage bullshit about uh, contacting your spirit guides and, you know, asking for Archangel um, Uriel and um, Michael and, and, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Well, who are these entities? What are they? Are they Archons? Are they controllers? Are they parasites? Are they, are they you know, you know, ask your angels, all this fuckery. Right now, I'm not saying angels don't exist, but what I'm saying is, be sure who these entities are giving you this information. Would you agree? I would absolutely agree, and I would add that. So the universe has some laws, universal laws, and one of those laws is that for every action, there's an equal and opposing action. For every event, there's an equal and opposing event. So as many um, negative entities as are manipulating, there are, in fact, positive hyperdimensional entities who attempt to assist. Now, if you're going to ask for assistance from call them your spirit guides you need to really be very clear about what you're asking for you need to make sure that they are purely beneficial to you and to your mission and to your path um, and you can ask you know what are your intentions and if you don't get a good feeling about it, if it just feels wrong, if it just, even if you want so much that this is, this for this to be um, an angel in your reality helping you, if it feels even a little wrong, you really, really have to question it. They, they have to give you some sort of truth. And the best way is for you to um, check in with your intuition. Does it feel 100% good or is there that little bit of 
I don't really know about this. And if there's that, I, I really, I just don't feel right about this. You really need to think about that. So these entities... And perhaps not go that route. These entities, what, what, what I'm trying to say is these entities can appear to you like Jesus Christ. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Lucifer um, was an angel, right? Um, supposedly... Uh, That's the story. Right? This is the story. So, you know, a beautiful angel. And um, so all that, all that glitters is not gold, right? The, these entities pass themselves off as the light, right? So they can... I've also heard of... Um, uh, in Is it... <laughs> Is it when passing over or during, for instance, ayahuasca ceremonies, these entities can come uh, as your mother or father or someone close to you, right? And you, 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 you know, you could trust them. Uh, you, you, would, you would want to trust them, but um, when you do put your trust in them, then they, they cloak themselves back to their original form uh, and become the demonic entity that's trying to trick you these are tr they're the trickster the jester right this is very real yeah this is a there's a really good movie actually that depicts that but in a good way so the movie contact at the end toward the end jodie foster ends up wherever it was that she ended up and the entity in order to give her information about what is going on outside of this world showed up as her father so that she would feel open enough to be able to hear what was being said. Uh -huh. So that does happen. It can happen in a very positive way. It can happen in a very, very negative way. And let's, let's just add the, the whole white light, the false white light. So when you when you pass over when you die when you leave your body the whole demiurge um, false white light uh, you know go towards the light this is this is bullshit right this is a lie this is a trick yeah well that's that's kind of a that's kind of a, a dear subject to me because I had a near-death experience in 2007 just after my daughter was born and I ended up experiencing this really bright light and traveling toward it. And it was, so, you know, it was so bright, it, you know, hurt to look at. But I did, I looked at it, I looked right in the center of it. And what I found there was not a benevolent being. And there was all the, all the norm, what you would consider normal. Um, what people talk about. It's time for you to come home. You've done your work here. Well, I had a newborn and children at home. So I was like, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not ready to leave yet. Um, this being in the center, when I was able to see through the light was entirely black, had no face, and the second I started saying, nope, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. It, um, it started to emit rage and it was rage that I could see. It undulated toward me like, I don't, like a wave of snakes or something. It was really uh, pretty freaky. It really, it really freaked me out. Um, and as, as soon as I experienced that rage, boom, I was back in my body, very, very ill, uh, close to death. I mean, I, I died. So um, that's one way that beings, and, and you know, a lot of these beings are told, hey, you're not done here. A lot of these humans are told, you're not, you're not finished here. Go back, go back. Well, what if... What if it was okay for them to leave? For me, it wasn't okay for me to leave. Do you see what I'm saying? It, I, it, they, they wanted me not here. Well, why? Because I'm a creator being. 
Do you think that? Do you see what I mean? Do you think you were punished when you were put back into your body um, for oh, not for most, not most not, definitely for most not definitely it was to... hell. It was absolute hell. I was very very ill, very ill. Right. And I had to fight my way back, which I did. I was um, kind of targeted for multiple attacks, just horrific. Horrific attacks, attacks in the astral um, that actually caused me physical injury. In the physical, people will tell you, oh, they can't hurt you. Bullshit. Bullshit. I would wake up with bite marks and bruises and scratches and um, bleeding. I was under severe attack for quite a while. And I think it was all to get me to stop doing the things that I was doing. Well, that's, which basically was helping people heal themselves. Well, that's right. It's distraction from with people. distraction from following your path and uh, of of love and healing. And it's uh, this is what most of the attacks are, right? It's um, to lower your vibration and and make you ill and make you sick and. This is coming well, that's, from. That's one of the reasons, yeah. And the other reason is they need, they they really thrive on pain, anguish, panic, rage. Well, this is frustration. Their, this hurt. is their food, right? This is loose energy, right? This is how they feed. Yeah. And so they create this, so they manipulate this. So going back to what you said earlier, this is parasite manipulation, and this is how these entities survive by creating. Uh, suffering, anguish, anxiety, fear, panic, pain, and that, if you look around the world, um, you'll see that they're, they're feasting. 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 Absolutely feasting. Yeah. Yeah. So let's um, go back to the timeline shift and we'll wrap it up. Uh, just to get back on track. Timeline shift. So we've both experienced the timeline shift today. Um, I mean, so, so we can, there's like sometimes multiple timeline shifts within a day or two, you know? Um, uh-huh, yeah. And that seems to be happening a lot more yeah. recently. Almost a desperate, it has a very desperate feel to it. And I'm going to ask you, is it, is it a collective thing? Or is it an individual thing? Like, am I jumping I think around? It's both. Am I jumping around timelines on my own, or is that is it because of something that's going on in the collective? What? What? I think it can be both. Yes, I think it can be both. We, I think we, um, the whole convid. Um, if you think back. Now, they've been planning this for a long time. They've been laying the groundwork for a long time. But if you think back... Well, if you, start, convid, if you start talking about it, convid... It blossomed. If, I'm sorry? If you start talking about convid, I'm going to have to put this episode on the Odyssey channel because it won't oh, survive no. okay. on YouTube. But anyway, well, it's I'll, fine. I'll just rephrase. Convid, I'll just rephrase. The, the pandemic. Go on, carry on. So when it when it all happened, it happened so fast. There was a timeline shift. I mean, I don't know about you, but I it was. Um, I would just was really mind blown at how quickly it was able to be implemented. That was a collective timeline shift. Right. Even though now understanding that they had been laying the groundwork for a long time, decades. But they were able to implement the manipulation in a very, very magical way, and it shifted literally overnight. So it really was an entire collective consciousness shifted onto a negative timeline. And, and it's almost and impossible for us to, as a collective, return to that timeline that we're on in December 2019. I don't think we're ever going to go back to, you know, this is what they keep telling us. They're like, things will not go back to the way, you know, they're telling us. It's well, almost, because that's what they want. They right. want things to not go back to normal. And if we're being really honest, normal wasn't good either. 
No, it wasn't. It was a collective insane Normal asylum. Was, Normal was asleep. Dead ass asleep at the wheel. So there have been some interesting changes. There have been a lot of awakenings, a lot of revealings. These are all good things. But we have an entire world, billions of people, completely under an MK Ultra spell. The handfuls of us who are awake are desperately trying to shift things if they're not ever going to go back and I wouldn't want them to go back anyway because again most were asleep but we're trying to shift to a timeline that isn't so destructive because in no way should we be going toward AI as the most prevalent the the codes to scan to get into um, events or facilities um, more damaging frequencies like 5G in no way should that be the end of the evolution you see what I'm saying we have the ability to shift to a more organic um reality and we know that this reality exists because we see evidence in Tartarian architecture photos um, history that they can't really erase because these are these are personal stories do you see what I mean so this is the reset that you're talking about um, the reset is what's occurring at the moment and it's not the first time they've done this right they've done this many times many 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 resets devastating horrible bloody sadistic resets yes that that doesn't have to be the case this time it shouldn't be the case this time we need to evolve upward instead of um backward devolving we have the right to evolve out of this destructive sadism that seems to be the kind of the bread and butter for the parasites. So we're on 47 minutes and I think we'll leave it there and pick this up uh, next episode. And thank you for joining me and thank you for sharing your wisdom. Is there anything you want to say? I hope that I hope that people are able to hear this and understand it. Okay, thank you very much. I'll talk to you next time.